So let's get into it. Let's talk some pro wrestling, and let's talk about this little bit of a um, this, this little bit of a, 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 a trivia. I don't know. A, okay, listen, buddy. You you you've you've been getting everybody riled up today because of your statements. So much so that we just dedicated the first sex segment of this show to it, and uh, and, and and you're you're infecting the chat room with this as well. So. He's got a suggested big question, but it, I think it's a point of con- controversy because everybody keeps talking about it, and, and it kind of exploded before the show, so I thought we'd get into it here. Um, what does the panel think of Cena, John Cena, in case you're confused, uh, having the most four-star matches in a year in the history of North American pro wrestling? Mm. Of so course... Speaking a little bit to the uh, open challenge and and how many people he's had great matches on Raw with the uh, pay per views uh, over over this past year with with just about everybody right uh, from Rusev on I mean I, uh, Brock Lesnar at the beginning of the year um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, Mad we're Mike, the, um, go ahead. I was just gonna say we're talking about um, the three way at the Rumble, uh, all three matches with Kevin Owens. We're talking about the Rollins match at SummerSlam. The Rollins oh, match at Night Champions. Match is not a champion truck, but the Rollins match at the MSG special. How many are up to? Is that seven? That's seven. Okay, that's oh, your seven matches right there. Hold on, like I actually have it. I had it pulled up real quick. So it's the the, the three way. Um, it's uh, the three with Owens. Oh yeah, you actually yeah you had it right. Three with Owens, three with Rollins, and the uh, triple threat at the Royal Rumble. Okay, because okay. I was really because because when you said that, I was like, what? And I had to look it up myself. So, so there's some common denominators there, aren't there? Owens and Rollins, for one thing. Uh, the common denier is essentially Ring of Honor. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. Uh, so, so Chris, when you have your uh, five star classic with Cena here very soon, we're caught. <laughs> that blew my mind. I actually, like my brain froze for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know. So, so I, I, I appreciate your 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 faith, but Jesus Christ, man. So, hey, the mayhem bump. I mean, I mean, the, the this is your like third time coming on one of our shows. Last I it, guy I remember having three or four showings on here. He's now Corey Graves. There you go. Wow. There you, there you okay. go. We, the mayhem bump just, is real. I'm just waiting for once I leave the studio. It's just all my dreams. Between that, the drift, the true. drifters popping up all over the place. Uh, oh yeah, Eric he's, Young you know, he's doing very well. Kind of employed. What's that? Eric Young is still kind of employed. There you go. We're helping him keep on by a thread. That's why he didn't. He should have came back, or he'd be doing a lot better. So, exactly. He doesn't remember who DNA we are. Might have, DNA might have a TV deal. We're not counting Jimmy Snuka. <laughs> Okay, mm. just want to make that clear. We're not no. counting Jimmy Snuka on that mayhem bump line. Okay, no, no, no. no. We're just letting that go. <laughs> yeah, uh, but back to John Cena, uh, mm. Matt. You got, you got. Were you doing math over there? Oh, he's got something going on. We'll leave Matt alone. Um, but uh, Matt, uh, actually, uh, Chris, you were, you were, you were talking a little bit. Had some interesting thoughts about uh, uh, Cena uh, uh, and these matches uh, before the show. Sure. Um, you know, one of the things they they say a lot is that. Uh, as far as having a good match is that it, it takes two to tango and mm-hmm. that it's not necessarily that someone can be carried, but to really get that kind of very special excellence, um, that that's chemistry between uh, two performers. And I think that it would be doing uh, John Cena a great, great disservice to suggest that the only reason uh, that these matches were as good as they were were because of Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar, and and Kevin Owens. Uh, that's not to say that those guys aren't fantastic. They are, but I think the, uh, especially the first Owens match, which I thought was the best. I thought the w- was it at um, Money in the Bank or what, which one was the first one? Payback. I'm not, I can't remember the payback. payback. No, I, well, I want to say it was Money in the Bank. Okay. Okay. Um, but the first one was no, it was Elimination Chamber. The first oh, right, one was right. definitely You're Elimination right. Chamber. You're right. Um, I thought that that was one of the best, uh, examples of two guys bringing the best out of each other, because I thought Cena was the perfect opponent for Kevin Owens and that you, you really got to, that was the Kevin Owens introduction 
to the uh, to the wrestling world at large. I mean, the people who knew him from from Ring of Honor and from the the independent circuit and even from NXT. That was his his big coming out party, and it could not have gone better. I thought it was an absolutely fantastic match, and it was not Kevin Owens, you know, dragging Cena through it. Those they had amazing chemistry. I mean, the chemistry was so good that they did it for the next three pay per views, next two pay per views. So uh, I just don't. I think to to suggest that um, this. I mean, it's it's an amazing accomplishment for Cena, and Cena's having an amazing year. I mean, the, just. The amazing matches on pay per view, the amazing matches with the the, the U.S. Open Challenge, um, it, it, you you cannot de- if if you are trying to deny his his talent and his ability at this point, I, just the there's too much evidence to suggest that you know not only great but but an all time great, in my opinion. Right, right, Matt. Matt, you've been you've been desperately researching this. What are your thoughts on this so far? I'm um I'm surprised, but when I went and looked at the matches, I wasn't surprised. Um, I don't know what to say, Sork. I don't know why Cena has kind of sometimes has diminishing returns for me when he's having these great matches. Um, even when he's having these uh the the series of matches he had with Owens by that third match, I was kind of like, okay, like I felt like I had seen it, like the and um. Brandon Stroud, I will get the Brandon Stroud mentioned in here because Eamon isn't here to do it. Um, <laughs> Brandon Stroud wrote about Raw and um, talked about how there has become this thing, at least from his perspective, of the Cena match. And it gets a little bit exhausting. But when you're watching the, the one-on-one Cena match, and you know, I'm also kind of talking about the matches we've seen in the U.S. Open Challenge and the stuff he's done with, uh, you know, obviously Sami Zayn. And we've seen some great matches with Cesaro and all that, and Neville. And it became a running joke about the everyone who gets called up from NXT can kick out of the attitude adjustment. So there is a routine to the Cena matches, but you know what? At the same time, you know what? There was a routine to Bret Hart matches and there was a routine to Ric Flair matches. So Hulk Hogan, holy I, I crap. To, I'm not going to rain on his parade here. I'm not going to deny that Cena's amazing. Um, I'm just saying that for me, it's, it gets a little it kind of wears you out after a little bit. And I was saying another thing too, as I was researching some stuff earlier, um, as far as like total matches ever in WWE history, Cena is now number two all time. So there's a reason we're kind of, some of us as fans are kind of growing a little exhausted. It's because we've seen nothing but this guy for more well, than a decade. Wait, wait, who's no, number, Cena, as good number as he, exhausted? As good as he's been in the ring and he has been very good. He's had a lot of great matches. He is in the most creative rut of almost any character in the history of professional wrestling. Okay. I think that's why he grates on everyone. I, w- I want to throw back for a second. Matt, who's the number one? Probably Taker, right? Uh, yeah, Undertaker is number one. You're okay. right. That's a very good answer, Mike, and that is number one, the Undertaker. Yep. Okay. I think one thing, and if, if I could jump in real quick, um, yeah. with Cena, and, and I was having a, a conversation with uh, someone earlier this weekend about Cena being sort of a, his character is locked down. Right. You don't really see any kind of fluctuation in how John Cena is presented, how well, John Cena there acts. How doesn't John, need to be. Ex, there doesn't yes, need to there be. Does. Well, for the, you, for, there's the I, artistically. I absolutely no, Mike. I absolutely agree with you. Artistically, okay. there comes a point where you're like, okay, and, and I mean, you'd have to be blind to see it. We've seen this act, but. The WWE gets this real great excuse of if they ever try to do something different, money noticeably drops. And they have shown time and time and time again that when Cena's not on pay-per-view, not on t- when he's not on pay-per-view, buy rates aren't as good. When he's not on Raw, ratings aren't as high. When he mm-hmm. isn't at house shows, house show uh, numbers go down. There is a dollars and cents direct correlation for Cena where there I think everyone would agree I don't don't think there's anyone that would agree that seeing some kind of character evolution would be great and would be a a breath of fresh air but he is so connected to the lifeblood of the WWE at this point that they would be uh, that that it would be very very financially risky right to try and do something drastic I mean uh, what would a heel turn 
do to now artistically or for for the fans that may be awesome that could be the you know it, it would definitely get me watching a lot more closely but what would that do to the bottom line at the end of the month for the wwe and would probably do a lot of damage uh yeah because hulk hogan when he turned heel he never sold any merch after that i'm, I'm not <laughs> saying he never that sold this- a single piece of merchandise I mean, there there's definitely examples of of it working, but it's. I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I'm saying it would be a risk that they're probably not willing yeah, to take. Yeah, yeah. That's there's a difference though. Cena's sales haven't dropped. Ratings yeah, are but dropping. I'm, I'm but, not even but, saying Cena has to turn heel. Yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that at all. I'm saying some nuance to the character might freshen it up a little bit. He can lose matches. Mm-hmm. Like they, you don't have to have Cena win every single feud you don't like dc comics reboot superman every 15 years or so and they change him up a little bit because they know he's the most overpowered guy they have right right Mm -hmm. matt matt you got a comment like if if doomsday crushes superman's spine people aren't gonna say well i guess that superman's not hot shit anymore he got beat Mm -hmm. in fact he didn't even die he was rebooted you know all that shit Matt. Cena can lose matches. Matt, like Matt Carlins. <laughs> Matt Carlins has the floor. Sorg, Sorg, I think we could sum this up in LOL Superman wins. Anyway. <laughs> uh, here's, the point, here's the point I want to make, and I will be echoing something that Eamon just said in the chat room. Mm-hmm. For all these great matches Cena has had this year, who has benefited from this, Sorg? I mean, Owens, maybe a little bit. Yes, he got that really huge bump coming in, but he's kind of drifted back into the continental title. I guess there's nowhere to go but down after you have a feud with John Cena, right? That's because. Uh, but other was... than that, I mean, I would not say that Seth Rollins has benefited from this ongoing series of matches with Cena. I would say, well, I mean, Brock doesn't need Cena to be who Brock is. But even other guys, this U.S. Open Challenge, who has gotten anything out of the U.S. Open Challenge? Has, has it helped Ziggler? Did it help Ambrose? Did it help Neville? Did it help Zayn? Did it help Cesaro? No, it didn't help any of these guys. So Cena gets to have great matches at 9 o'clock every Monday night, but who does it help? And the third hour goes in the crapper. That's the root. That's the routine. That's where we are in 2015. And, right? and I every think you, Cena feud has literally Cena. been. Every Cena feud has literally been one step forward, two steps back, because the guy wins the first match against Cena and then proceeds to get shellacked for the next two and a half months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chris, no, I, I, I mean, you. It's been seen over and over again. I think that um, they will always point to. They'll always point to the money. And, um, you know, uh, Mike was making some, some good points that, you know, it's not necessarily uh, going to be a one-to-one correlation that any change in John Cena would, uh, would be bad. There's some that may spark more interest. He may make more money. I think that they're just, the WWE at this point is very risk adverse. They're afraid to take chances. They, um, and they've got something that works and they're probably going to stick with it until it stops making money. And you know, that we may be nearing the tipping point of that at some point in the future. But as far as right now, I think they're always going to look at the bottom line and that they'll always be beholden Mm -hmm. to the bottom line that creative will always be beholden, especially with, with a, with a, you know, publicly traded company like the WWE Uh, always be, be told into the money. So from the chat room, uh, Garza is saying, uh, seen as the proxy, but he's still, he should have power to push people like he did with Nikki. Okay. There you mm. go. That's a good point there. I'm interesting. That's never addressed. Uh, but yeah, the, the guys are very, uh, yeah. Bookie goes in actual match though as well, which is why he stands with Owen and Neville being the only ones who get truly elevated. And I'm with that. I, again, you don't have to win. I think Cesaro, Cesaro had a great batch of matches, but then they didn't do anything with them. And I think there's a lot of stuff going on that, yeah, Cena gives you the rub, but that only goes so far. You know, because, mm-hmm. again, who knows the political structure back there? For I'm sure you know how that works in the locker rooms you've been in. Just imagine. I would imagine just anything like that, like, to the nth scale, right? I mean, I can't, I cannot even fathom what goes into it because at least with any of the independent companies I've worked with, Generally, it's a you know who you're who who's pulling who's in charge. You know who's in charge, and you know who's listening to who. Whether it be um, you know the owner, the booker, 
uh, respected veterans in the locker room. You you sort of know who has power. Whereas in the WWE, it's not only um, sort of the the inner locker room politics, but then the corporate side of things, where there could be people who are in the the suit and ties who have their own agenda that may have no knowledge of professional wrestling or very limited. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, how often have we heard that there have been writers for the company that weren't wrestling fans or, or knew very little about pro wrestling when they, when they got that job. So I can only imagine what the, uh, what it would be like at the WWE. All right. Well, the fire of this conversation is going to continue to burn on in the chat room. So, uh, and I'm sure on our Facebook page as well. Uh, so please, uh, I'll let you guys know. You know, let, let us know what you think of the John Cena situation. Uh, the Buddy Landau's burning question that is firing a lot of stuff tonight. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a quick uh, look at our friends and be right back. Talk about uh, Mike's uh, new wrestling math and uh, his his recent marathon of everything that happened last Wednesday in uh, pro wrestling and his uh, post Comic Con binge and uh, everything going on there. Uh, but I want to touch base on, uh, speaking of wrestling, we talked about Remix Pro Wrestling. Uh, support indie wrestling. You see this guy, Chris LaRusso, from Vicious Outcast Wrestling over there uh, at IndieWrestling.us. You can pick up uh, any of those shows that they've released over there digitally, and uh, including the Rosa uh, Now, Now, you're not in the Deathmatch tournament. No, right? hell no. 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 Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> but no, absolutely that, not. I mean, uh, props, to, no, absolutely props to all those guys. I have a ton of respect. For everybody who goes through that. But no, you will not see Chris LaRusso on the Lords of the Anarchy <laughs> uh, digital download. Okay, being a peasant in that case, right? Yes. Uh, but you can check out that. You can 